Irrigation valves are complex products that can be intimidating to install and maintain. When a valve isn't turning on as expected, it's a concern for any irrigation contractor or property manager. In this video, we'll show you what to do if you encounter a valve that won't turn on. Check the controller first. It's a good idea to check for the obvious and easiest solutions, starting at the controller. Is there a runtime programmed? And is there a 24 volt output on the valve terminal? If that checks out, then move to the valve for the manual tests. Is there water available? If none of the valves in the system are turning on, you're likely experiencing a water supply issue. Most irrigation systems have a manual isolation valve near the point of connection that can turn the water off to the entire system. Check for this first. Then, check the isolation valves on any backflow preventer to make sure they're open. If there is a normally closed master valve, make sure that it's operating properly and that the flow control is not closed. Does the valve have flow control? Some irrigation valves have a flow control feature that allows you to adjust how far the diaphragm moves when the valve opens. This handy feature lets you fine-tune the flow for a zone. Sometimes an inexperienced maintenance person may inadvertently turn the flow control all the way down. This can keep the diaphragm from lifting off the seat, restricting the flow of water. Check to see if the valve that isn't operating has flow control. If it does, turn it counterclockwise until it's fully open. Next, rotate it a half turn clockwise. Then, try to manually open the valve to see if the issue is fixed. Does the valve open manually? Most irrigation valves can be opened manually. On Hunter valves, you could do this in two ways. At the external manual bleed screw, or by rotating the solenoid a quarter turn counterclockwise. The external bleed screw allows water to escape from the top of the diaphragm and vent outside the valve. After the water is released, the force on top of the diaphragm will be lower than on the bottom, and the diaphragm will lift from the seat, allowing water to flow through the valve. If using the solenoid method, the quarter turn will lift the solenoid plunger from the seat, which allows water to escape the upper chamber and flow downstream into the piping system. If the valve opens with the manual bleed screw, but not the solenoid method, there are two possible causes. A clogged bonnet exhaust port or a clogged solenoid exhaust port. We'll cover what to do if you encounter this situation later in this video. Is there an electrical issue? If you can turn on the water manually, the next step is to check the electrical components. There are three system components you'll need to check. The controller, the solenoid, and the wiring. If the controller is delivering power to the valve, first check the solenoid to make sure it's functional. A solenoid should read between 20 and 60 ohms. To check this, grab your multimeter and turn the dial to the ohms position. Cut the old wire splices to the solenoid from the field wires in the valve pit. Strip back about a quarter inch, six millimeters of insulation on the solenoid leads. Touch the black test probe to one of the leads and the red test probe to the other. If your reading is between 1 and 19 or 60 and beyond, the solenoid is bad and you need to replace it. Be sure to cut the wires off the old solenoid to avoid accidentally using it in the future. Next, verify that the wires coming from the controller are in good working condition. Make sure no water has infiltrated the outer insulation and started corroding the copper wire. If everything checks out, there could be a problem in the wiring to the valve. 
there might be a small nick somewhere along the wire, or even a complete break. This will take more time to diagnose, and you may need to use a wire locator or a fault finder to help with the process. Is there debris in the valve? If you determine that debris is preventing the valve from opening, you'll need to shut off the water to the system before proceeding to this next step. Once you're sure the water is off at the source, remove the solenoid to check if debris has entered the solenoid exhaust port. If so, clean the port and replace the solenoid. Then turn the water back on and rotate the solenoid a quarter turn. If the valve still doesn't activate, it's most likely due to dirty water, calcium, or debris buildup inside the valve. If dirty water is the cause, you should consider installing filtration upstream to eliminate recurrence of this problem. You can either replace the entire valve, replace the interior components, or troubleshoot the exact issue and repair it accordingly. Once again, be sure the water source is turned off. Then you can take the top off the valve. If the valve is an older Hunter model, try removing the interior components, cleaning the body, and installing a new valve interior. If you're troubleshooting a newer valve, inspect the diaphragm to determine if debris is present inside the valve that could be stopping it from opening. You can do this by gently flushing the valve to exhaust any hidden debris. The bonnet exhaust port could also be clogged. Make sure every component is clean before putting it back together. If the diaphragm is old or damaged, Replace it accordingly based on the valve model you're working on. If you're working on a valve with a glued inlet and outlet, excess glue may have reached the body exhaust port. In this case, try using a rigid piece of wire or an irrigation flag to clear the glue out of the port opening. There are a range of possibilities that can prevent a valve from opening. It's important to understand how valves work and apply your knowledge to diagnose probable causes. This way, you can get your system working properly in the shortest amount of time. To learn more about our complete line of industry-leading valves for residential and commercial applications, visit HunterIndustries.com.